from where I started to where I am is probably the most amazing thing in the world right now. And I can't wait to just get bigger and bigger and keep going. See, it was hard being Stoner Rob at the beginning of my career because cannabis wasn't as acceptable as it is right now. We're gonna keep the laughs going with the highs and those two things go together perfectly. It doesn't matter what political standpoint, what race you are, what religion you are. If you just treat this person like another human being and smoke a little weed with them, then I think everything will be cool. And that's my message to the world. Yes, thank you guys so much. San Diego, how are you guys feeling? Let me hear it. Yeah. This is amazing, man. I'm shooting my first special here. We chose this club, San Diego, California, because if it doesn't go well, we're 20 minutes from Mexico. We could start that. <laughs> we'll just start a new life. This is great because I came from the bottom. I, I came from poverty. My, my family was poor and then I was homeless. And it was crazy because on the way here, we were driving over a bridge I used to live under, homeless. <laughs> and now I'm driving over it on my way to my first comedy special. <laughs> It's a blessing, because I'm from Riverside, California, man. Yeah, which means my dad's a tweaker. Uh, like, I always thought it was normal. Like, I thought light bulbs were supposed to be pipes, too. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I didn't know what was normal till I went to school. I remember I went to school for the first week, and I was like, Dad, you know these people eat every day? <laughs> He's all, they're white, that's why, they're white. <laughs> that fool was crazy, dude. Like, he was such a nut, he was such a fucking tweaker, it was hilarious. Like, he would give me gifts that were like hand-me-downs. Like, my birthday's in October, so for my birthday, I asked for a Ninja Turtle, and he took my cousin's Incredible Hulk, and he put a blue bandana on it. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> He's like, you don't want it? I was like, no. So for Christmas, I asked for a Hulk Kogan, and he gave me the same incredible Hulk, but on the chest he wrote Hogan. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? He's like, why are you crying? That's an incredible Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I swear to God, he was a, he made me a better drug dealer by being such a paranoid tweaker. I swear to God. Like he would wake up and be like, did you steal five cents? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> then he broke it down. He's like, if you steal five cents five times a day by Friday, you could buy a nick. I was like, that's fucking true. All I gotta do is come up with a nickel five times a day and I'm living great. And then he got clean. <laughs> and then he thought he was God. You know what I mean? When people get, there's no in between. There's no like, uh, okay, I used to do suck dick for crack. And now, <laughs> like people get clean and he's like, I don't know why you smoke weed. Like, bitch, you smoked dope. <laughs> why do you smoke weed? Because you smoked dope. I was scared every day. You couldn't ask him for shit. I remember one Christmas, I was stupid. I was like, can I have a trampoline? He's like, a what? I said, a trampoline. He said, get on the back of the lowrider and hit the switches, bitch. What the fuck are you trying to do? <laughs> it 
<laughs> it's crazy because I'm half Mexican and half white. Like my dad's from Jalisco, but my mom is from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. So it's weird. Like I liked that Christmas. You know what I mean? You get cool stuff on your white side. I'm like, this is great. On my dad's side, I got lottery tickets. <laughs> and if they were a winner, they take them back. They're like, that's the wrong ticket. I gave you the wrong ticket. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I remember having birthday parties and on my, this, I swear to God, this is what my invitations read between the ages of one and five. It said, birthday party for Robert Martinez Jr. 10, 19, whatever. And then it would say, no presents, money tree only. And they would take the money tree to the liquor store every two fucking hours. They wouldn't even take the money off. They would take the money tree to the liquor store and be like, hey, can we get some beer? How much? This fucking much. Five branches. <laughs> you know how traumatic it was just living with that? Like on Easter, on Easter, my dad's mom, my grandma, cooked rabbit. And then we'd be like, why don't we have any Easter baskets? <laughs> and she'd be like, because I cooked the fucking Easter bunny. Because he broke into the wrong house, mijo. That's what happens, mira. When you break into the wrong house. He teaching you a lesson? Like, what the fuck? I love coming out here to San Diego. This is great. Like, like I, I was all nervous. I'm like, I got to do a special. And then I realized, you know, I got to work for 45 minutes. That's all I got to do. <laughs> like, most of you go to work for like eight hours. Some of you 12 hours. Like when I get called in to comedy, like last night I got called in. And they're like, can you come down and do some time? I'm like, how much time? They're like, can you do like 12 minutes? I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> and I didn't realize how little I do <laughs> until I put a lasagna in the oven. <laughs> and then I went and did my time. And I came home and I still had an hour left on the lasagna in the oven. <laughs> do shit this is <laughs> like, I could technically do my work at halftime of any football game I just, I, I just book me during halftime I gotta get back to watch the rest of the game <laughs> I love traveling around too dude that's what we've been doing I, I have a I have a residency right now I'm always in Las Vegas four nights a week and I can't tell you the place because I don't want to get sued <laughs> But it rhymes with radosphere. Uh, <laughs> have you ever been there? That place is fucking hood. Don't woo for that shit. That shit. <laughs> like, I love the, the casino I perform at in Vegas, but across the street is ghetto as fuck. I'm gonna let you know. Like, I went down the street, and I was like, are they filming training day here? Is that what the fuck's up? <laughs> like, it's a crazy area. It's all nice outside now, so my windows were down. I turned the corner last week. I was like, roll that shit the fuck up. <laughs> then my lady's like, why'd you roll that up? I said, bitch, it's cold over here. You gotta be here. <laughs> She said, why'd you lock the door? I said, cold comes through the door. You gotta be careful with cold. <laughs> then we park in the parking garage, man. And she's like, oh, do you remember the level we parked on? I said, no, because it ain't gonna be there when we get the fuck back anyway. <laughs> that shit is stolen. 
I did that shit at the casino. The lady in the front row's like, not me, Rob. I valeted. I said, no, you didn't, bitch. We don't have valet, okay? I said, that's my cousin Jesus, still in cars and shit. How are you, sir? You feeling good? Fuck yeah. What do you... Did we search fucking people before they came into this special? <laughs> what do you do for a living, sir? You didn't dump my, all right, holy shit. Did we catch the Zodiac Killer? Is, that what they're doing? Is this your boyfriend? No. No, did they just sit you here with this guy? Are you okay? Blink twice, Britney Spears, right now. Blink twice if you're not safe right now. I will save the shit out of you free. I will free you. <laughs> How are you? Are you? You're, you're solid. Solid? You look like you're kidnapped as fuck. You're not even looking at the show. Are you okay? Is everybody okay here? I feel like all the women at this special are not here willingly. <laughs> hey, Anne Frank, look at me. We're gonna talk. Is this your girlfriend? Of my choice, or did you just grab her fucking? <laughs> what do you do for a living? You're a welder? Yeah, you welded her next to you right now. a weird ass crowd for a special. <laughs> Come to San Diego. It's diverse. I'm like, yeah, there's Zodiac killers hanging with fucking Anne Franks and shit. Your guys' combined journal would be amazing, by the way. <laughs> I love coming out on tour, dude. I, fuck, I love touring, because I have six kids. <laughs> so, like, anything that gets me the fuck away from those pieces of shit, then we're gonna go. It's okay to laugh, they're not your children. Six of them, you guys. I took all six to Disneyland two days ago. Yeah, fucking, so buy this special. This is what the fuck we're saying. Six of them today, and I don't name my kids. <laughs> you know, that's how you get attached and shit. You can't. We treat it like squid games at my house, one through six. That's what we call them, one through six. <laughs> if number four doesn't make, to, make it to dinner, number four has been eliminated, you know what I mean? <laughs> I took all six of them. And we get to the park, 9.30 in the morning, when they open. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you, white annual pass holder. <laughs> we get to the park at 9.30. And we walk in and the youngest one tugs on my shirt. And she goes, Dad? And I said, yes, number six. <laughs> and she goes, I want a churro. <laughs> and I'm like, are you fucking serious, number six? And I look at the other five and I go, do any of you pieces of shit? on a churro and they're like no way <laughs> because they know better no matter how much money we have now I was very ghetto as fuck <laughs> so when we go on vacation your bitch ass gets one thing that's all you get <laughs> so if you want those ears at the end of the night you better not eat that churro at the beginning of the day <laughs> because at the end of the night when you're like Dad, where are my ears? My brothers and sisters got ears. I'm be like, bitch, you ate your ears at 9.30 in the morning. 
and they were cinnamony delicious. Do you remember those? But the youngest one doesn't care. She's like, fuck your ears. <laughs> like she's, I'm like, where the fuck did you learn that language, you little bitch? <laughs> she's like, I can't eat ears. Man. She's like, I want the churro. And so I'm like, all right. So I walk to the churro guy, 9.30 in the morning, and I say, one churro. He says, $12. I said, fuck you. The motherfucker heard me wrong. I was like, uno churro, one churro. Like, I'm not feeding all 101 of these fucking Dalmatians right now. He said, sir, that's the price of one churro. It's $12. I said, the fuck it is, Trevor. First of all, you're not gonna tell a Mexican who has been to Mexico <laughs> that a churro is 12 fucking dollars. You go to Mexico tomorrow, right? Give the churro guy $12. He'll suck your dick and give you his car keys. I promise you that. <laughs> He'll wake up every morning for six months with churros on your fucking lock. With a nice handwritten letter, thank you for the purchase of $12 worth of churros. <laughs> the Disneyland's getting goddamn ridiculous with their price. Do you remember in the 80s and 90s, you don't, do you remember in the 80s and 90s when lockers were a quarter? and you got that big ass ugly orange key and you had to carry it around all day and you knew who was a stoner because we tied it to our shoelaces, <laughs> right? So we wouldn't lose the key. And then we lost our shoes. <laughs> Lockers ain't no fucking quarter no more. Lockers now, are $10 every time you open it. Every time you open it. But you guys are cool, so I'm gonna give you a hack that I use every time I go to a theme park. What I do is I get to the park and I buy all my shit, all the souvenirs, all the dumb shit for the stupid six pieces of shit. <laughs> we'll go win all the little skill games, you know what I mean? And then I put everything in a big ass bag. And then I go and turn it into lost and found. <laughs> and I go, somebody lost a bunch of shit out here. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, when the park's closing, we go to lost and found. And we say, I seem to have lost a bunch of shit throughout the day. <laughs> And they'll give you everything back without spending a dollar, you guys. You'll never spend a dollar. I'm telling you, because Disneyland's out, like, I usually go by myself. <laughs> because I got Stone and Rob money, not Tommy Chong money. You know what I mean? I'm like. So I go by myself because I get high in the park. You know what I mean? I love to get high in the park. It's great, but you always got that one concerned parent. And you know who I'm talking about. They got like a little pecker pouch fanny pack on right there. The fucking Birkenstocks and like an Anaheim Angel visor. There's one in here. There's one in here. 
And I'll be smoking, and they come flopping over, like, flop, 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 flop. <laughs> and they're like, excuse me. I'm like, what's up, man? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, are you smoking weed? I'm like, look, I'm just trying to get a little goofy, man. <laughs> I said, don't act all dopey with me right now, dude. I said, it's not even that fat. It's a mini. I said, so hit it and be my tigger or act like Lilo and Stitch. I don't give a fuck. What'd you do? Then I ran into the same fucker two hours later on the other side of the park. And I'm smoking weed. And he goes, you again? And I go, yep. And he said, why? I said, because it's a small world after all. <laughs> That joke only works in California. <laughs> Did that shit in Kansas? They're like, we don't, we've never been there. We're, we live in Kansas. <laughs> Touring, you see some crazy shit. Like I was just in Seattle, Washington. Like there's another Seattle. Seattle, Washington? <laughs> Not Seattle, Denmark. I was in Seattle, Washington. And it was pouring rain, and I guess that's just what it does in Seattle. And we're on the freeway, and I'm smoking weed, so I'm driving like eight miles an hour. Because <laughs> I'm cautious, you yeah. know? And it's like pouring rain, and a car passes me doing like 90, spins out, hits the wall, and then keeps going. <laughs> And I'm like, this is fucking good weed, dude. I don't know. <laughs> the fuck? And then another car, five minutes later, spins out on the other side, hits the wall, and keeps going. So now I think I'm driving wrong in Seattle. I'm like, we're gonna get a ticket if I don't hit a fucking wall, dude. So we get to the show, and I explain what happened. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck do you mean, yeah? <laughs> They're like, it's just, it rains real hard over here. I'm like, bitch, I'm from Los Angeles, California. If it's 70 and drizzling, my kids don't go to school that day. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck is this, no? <laughs> I don't like the looks of this. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't know windshield wipers were made for water. I thought they were just bug cleaners and shit. <laughs> like in LA, we thought when those wore out, we're like, we need a new car. The little bug cleaners are broken. <laughs> I'm telling you, you see the craziest shit touring, dude. I was on. I was on tour, and, and it's not so much seeing crazy shit as when you're touring around, they'll give you uh, a lot of people to work with that you don't know. Like, tonight I got to work with a lot of great comics that are my friends, but sometimes you get booked with some comedians that you don't want to fuck with. <laughs> like, I was in Kansas, and I had to work with a porn star, and I didn't find out she was a porn star until it was too late. Just listen to the story. So, <laughs> we're outside. She go, I'm smoking a joint, as I do. And she goes, oh, hey, you're Stoner Rob? And I'm like, hey. And she introduces herself. And she goes, what were you doing all day? I go, oh, I was filming. And I hit it. And I give it to her. And she goes, oh, that's crazy. I was filming, too and she hits it. <laughs> and she gives it to me. So I go, what were you filming? And I hit it. <laughs> and she goes, I was eating a guy's ass for the last three hours. I 
I said, bitch, that's some shit you gotta tell a motherfucker before. She got mad at me. She's like, what are you talking about? I brushed my teeth. I said, bitch, did you brush your face? I said, because if you're eating ass with your teeth, you're doing it wrong. I told my homie that story. He's like, what ass tastes like? I was like, weed mostly. I don't know. That's not even the worst. I was on tour. <laughs> and, 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 and it isn't. Uh, I had to tour with this biker. He's 365 pounds. And he hits me up one day and he's like, hey, do you want a car pull to the show? <laughs> and I'm like, sure, bro, whatever. And then the motherfucker brings the bike. I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to do with this? He said, jump on. I said, I'm not sitting bitch behind you on this thing, dog. He said, why not? I said, bro, you're 365 pounds. I'm 36 pounds. I said, I couldn't even reach around to hold the fuck on. My middle finger will barely touch an areola. That's as far as it gets. I said, we're gonna look ridiculous. He said, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean, what do I mean? Dude, we're gonna get on the freeway and people are think, gonna think you got a Dora the Explorer backpack hanging out of that. He said, what are you gonna do? I said, I'm gonna do what Mexicans have been doing for thousands of years. And I sat on the handlebars like this. <laughs> he said, well, I'm picking you up tomorrow. I said, bitch, are you bringing the bike? He said, you bet your ass I'm bringing the bike. I said, then I'm gonna dress like a biker. <laughs> yeah, so I put on all the leather we had in the house. And I watched Gangland, so I felt comfortable. I was like, this is how they do it on Sons of Anarchy. So I feel pretty badass, and he pulls up to the Airbnb on his bike, and I come outside, and he gets off the bike, and he looks me dead in the eyes, and he goes, what the fuck are you wearing? So I unzipped my mouth and said, what the fuck are you talking about? That fool left me. I was like, I should have went with the red ball. <laughs> this is really fun, man. I, I flew over here and someone booked me on Spirit. <laughs> and I was like, is this a plane? <laughs> like, it's pretty crazy when none of the chairs match, right? You're like, what the fuck is this? like a fucking swap meet of chairs? 
Why? One's red, one's blue, one's one of those fold-out ones soccer moms use. You're like, what the fuck? They're like, that one has a cup holder. That one's going to be good. So. I got on Spirit. I'm not even bullshitting you. I got on Spirit. I went in the bathroom. The trash can said Delta. I said, there's still a trash can. <laughs> They're like, hey, when that Delta flight empties, go over there, take their fucking trash can. We're out of trash cans. Their motto is like, we have spirit. Yes, we do. We have spirit. You're fucked. <laughs> Their flights are so cheap because they get you with, they're like, fly for 40 cents. It's fine. <laughs> oh, you got a bag? How big is it? Oh, it's a little pecker pouch? $94. Go ahead, check that. Like, what the fuck? People on spirit flights are the best, dude. I, I had this chick in front of me on a spirit flight. She's like, I paid for first class. Bitch, there's no such thing as first class on a spirit flight. There is no such thing as first class. I, every time they're like, we're only, like, we're not serving a meal because we're going a short distance today to Hawaii. It's only seven hours. <laughs> Like, let's face it, you're riding spirit. Most of you are fat pieces of shit anyway. Uh... <laughs> I got caught smoking in the bathroom on a spirit flight. <laughs> and this is how hood it is. The stewardess caught me. She's like, you smoking in there? I was like, yeah. She's like, is it good? <laughs> That's the best, right? <laughs> I had that happen to me recently, too. Like, when weird shit happens like that, when you're supposed to get in trouble and you don't. <laughs> it's like you're on the Truman Show. You're like, oh, my gosh. Should I, should I try to rob somebody right now? I might be able to get away with it. Like, I went into the, the casino that we perform at. I took the wrong elevator. And I ended up where all the money is. And if you look at me, it does not scream, be where all the money is. <laughs> like if 10 million went missing and you saw me, you'd be like drugs. Like we have full spent it on drugs. So I ran into the next room and I ended up in a board meeting. And I played it off so fucking clean, man. I walked in, they're like, Stoner Rob? I said, hey, that's me, man. The fucking present and shit, man. They said, this is a board meeting. I said, I know, I'm fucking bored, man. It's about time we sat down and had a meeting about this. <laughs> and it's crazy because I don't know if you've ever been to the stratosphere in Las Vegas, but it's a big needle in the sky. And they put rides on top, a thousand feet in the air, in the hottest city in America. And I don't know if you all learned what we learned in first grade, but heat rises, right? She said, yeah, she validated me. Yes, it does. Where's the fucking kindergarten teacher? You should ask. Heat rises. Go there right now. It's 1.30 down here. 2.48, the fuck up there. They said, you want to ride a ride? I said, what is it? They said, a simulation of an actual fire. Have you ever been in an actual fire? <laughs> I didn't know how, that they charged you. Like, the first time I did anything there, I didn't know they charged you to go up an elevator. <laughs> so I gave the lady 20 bucks, and I went up the elevator. And when I got to the top, there was another lady, and she goes, would you like to pay to ride a ride? 
And I said, bitch, what the fuck was this? I said, I just gave you $20 to go a thousand feet in the air. That's a spirit flight. That counts as a fucking ride. It didn't make any sense, dude. Like, there's a rotating restaurant up there. And why are all rotating restaurants in the fucking ghetto? Have you ever noticed that shit? It's only good for like 10 minutes of the rotation. You're like, that's beautiful. That's amazing. That what the fuck's happening? There's a fire. That's our car. That's our car. My lady's like, I hate rotating restaurants. And I had bought us reservations. I said, so when it starts rotating, walk slowly, bitch. You'll stay in the same place. <laughs> that joke's way smarter than you got. Uh, I do love performing. Like I said, we're always in Las Vegas. And I do love being in Las Vegas because I'm from L.A. And I'm, I live in L.A. And I hang out there. And my little cousin, my little cousin he's my intern. His name's Jacob. And Jacob is gay. And I don't give a fuck if you're gay, black, white, transsexual, bisexual. If you smoke weed, I'm going to fucking hang out with you. You know what I mean? Like, let's just... Hey, I'll buy you a roach clip that says BF. Mine will say F. We'll connect it and smoke. That's what matters. <laughs> they said, which bathroom do you use? Whichever one we could smoke weed in. You just point me to that one. But what's crazy about it is Jacob is real feminine. He doesn't like to be called gay. And I said, well, what do you want to be called? He said, I'd like to be called a fruit. <laughs> I said, why do you want to be called a fruit? He said, because I like to get peeled open, plus I'm juicy. <laughs> I said, okay, you little kumquat, get in the car. <laughs> well, we got shit to do, man. So Jacob jumps in the car, and we're on our way back from Vegas to California, and I'm smoking a joint, and we hit a checkpoint. But it's not a normal DUI checkpoint. It's that special one at State Line. They said, do you got any fruits or vegetables in the car? I was like, Jake, you gotta get the fuck out, bro. I said, I can't get caught with a 180 pound fruit sitting right here next to me. And it's great because that drive from California to Vegas, which I'm pretty sure most of you have made, a lot of you look like drug dealers. And keep taking that weed over there, my good sirs. But that drive's boring as fuck, is it not, right? It's like desert, 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 world's biggest thermometer. <laughs> and white people jump out of the car and take pictures with this shit. It'll say 119 and Becky's out of the Prius to take a goddamn picture. You're like, bitch, you know why it says that? Stay in the fuck in the car. And then you keep going, you're like, desert, desert, desert. Then you get to Vegas, and they got the world's biggest toilet. And they call it Circus Circus. Now, if you have ever stayed at Circus Circus, I need you to raise your hand so I can stop the show, start you a GoFundMe program. We're, this is a make-a-wish now. We're going to improve your fucking life. If, for those of you that don't know, Circus Circus in Vegas is a piece of shit. Like, they shouldn't even charge you to stay there. That should be like one of those haunted houses where they're like, if you stay here for 24 hours, we'll give you the keys to Circus Circus and a free buffet. How's that? This is how ghetto Circus Circus is. I go past Circus Circus and look at the letters that work on the side of their fucking building. It looks like they're playing Will of Fortune on the side of Circus Circus. Nobody's got a letter correct ever in the history of ever. 
Like, is there an X? There's no X's. There's still... If you think I'm lying, check in there this week. Go to the main entrance. For the last two years, both of their C's have been out. That shit says, Arcus, Arcus, over the top of their belly. And they don't give a fuck to fix it. I sent them a letter. I said, why don't you take an O and cut it in half? I love that joke because the people that aren't laughing are going to lay down in bed tonight and be like, holy shit, that's two C's. <laughs> it really says, Ergus, at least I go out simultaneously. You know what I mean? Come back in two months, it'll say cuss, cuss. That's all I was going to say. <laughs> in three years, we'll all think it's a new casino. You're like, the US, US? That's patriotic as fuck. <laughs> Do you remember when that was the cuss cuss? <laughs> then your mom's gonna be like, yeah, but do you remember when it was Arcus Arcus? You weren't even born. You weren't even born when it was Arcus Arcus. I saw Wayne Newton at Arcus Arcus. Vegas is a trip, man. Like, you gotta, all right, well, there you go. All right. <laughs> Vegas is a trip, because Vegas is the only place you could be smoking weed, have a prostitute in your car, be drinking, and have a rip tag from the mattress, and the only thing you're gonna get pulled over for is the rip tag off of the fucking mattress. <laughs> that shit's crazy. You know you can bet on the Little League World Series now in Las Vegas? Man, I used to be scared playing baseball when my dad's like, strike out, I'll beat your ass. <laughs> now you got some mobster bookie like, strike out, I'll kill your whole fucking family. That's <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> I gotta get back to Vegas after this shortly, guys. I'm staying at Circus Circus. Uh, no, just... <laughs> I did stay there one time. I did have to stay there one time, you guys, and this is a, a true story. I'm not bullshitting you guys. It's a true story. I stayed at Circus Circus, and I go to check in. The lady goes, you're staying in the manor. And I said, okay, which elevator is the manor? And she laughed, yeah, just like that. <laughs> she pulls out a map. Not of Circus Circus, of all of Las Vegas. Like, I thought I was on Naked and Afraid and shit. I was like, I need a fire starter and a little white bitch. I gotta survive. That's the only way to live. She says, sir, get in your car. I said, get in my car? I'm staying here. She's like, why are you freaking out? I said, because I'm high and I've never been somewhere I was, but I wasn't there when I got there yet. She said, it's easy. And I'm like, hold on. I look at my agent and I said, we gotta solve a riddle to get these room keys. I thought it was a reverse escape room. I was like, we got 30 minutes to escape in this bitch or we have nowhere to sleep. And she goes, no, sir, it's easy. Get in your car, turn around, make a right, make a right, make a left, make a right, make three lefts. And then one more left and you'll be there. I said, hold the fuck on, shoots and ladders. <laughs> I said, at the end of that, did you tell me to make three lefts and one more left? She said, yeah. I said, that is a fucking circle, bitch, okay? <laughs> I don't have time to explain geometry, but go home and make four lefts. You'll be right the fuck back to where you started from. <laughs> So we get to the manor, which looks like Motel 7. <laughs> fucked Motel 8. And then had a little crack Motel 6, baby. <laughs> and their motto is, we'll leave the pipe on for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I walked in there and I was like, R. Kelly peed on somebody here. It for sure happened. <laughs> 30 years of piss. 
So I had to Google Circus Circus. And this is no bullshit. This is what pops up. It says it's the number one destination to take your children in Las Vegas. And then right under it, it says it's the number one destination to get your car stolen <laughs> in Las Vegas. I said the next time my kids piss me off, I'll just leave them in the car at Circus Circus. <laughs> You guys have been awesome, so that's usually my time. But I'm gonna leave you with one more if you guys want it. If you guys want one more. Now, I already gave you a life hack. <laughs> on how to get out of the locker. But here's what I'm gonna do for you now. If you never wanna pay a bill, because you got shitty service at a restaurant. Don't do this here. Because <laughs> I like to get paid. Uh, here's what you do. This happened to me in Boston. All right? I was in Boston. By the way, they hate when you say Boston like that. <laughs> so I was in Boston. And I took some acid, but that is neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. It's not even part of the story. I just like you to know that we could party after if you have acid. So I'm in Boston, man. And we go to eat. And this, this waitress is being like a real see you next Tuesday, which means. She's a fucking cunt. Uh, she said, don't call me a cunt. I said, I cunt. Um, she wouldn't let us get up to get a beer. It took 45 minutes for us to get a beer. And then when she comes, she goes, okay, what do you guys want to eat? I said, can we have two separate orders? She goes, fuck no. And I'm like, are you serious? She goes, I'm not doing extra writing. I'm like, it's not extra writing, it's just extra paper. But whatever. <laughs> and then I go, can we get another beer? She goes, when I get time. I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, what's going on? And then I go and I ask her the question I ask everybody. I say, can I smoke weed in here? And she goes, absolutely not. I said, why not? She said, the law. I said, what would happen if I smoked weed in here? She said, you smoke weed in here, and I'll kick you the fuck out the second you light that blunt. So I looked at my homie. I said, get anything you want. <laughs> Because it's on me tonight. So we order everything, dude. We're getting all fucked up. We order everything we want, everything we need. And then right when she's bringing the bill, I light the blunt. And she goes, what the fuck did I tell you? Get the fuck out. I said, yes, ma'am. And we never paid a fucking dollar. And that is how you get out of paying a bill. Did you guys have fun, you guys? I appreciate you being